Well, what happens is you start to see a common theme when it comes to salad bars. They were big in the 80s. Ponderosa, Sizzlers, Wendy's, you know, everyone kind of used the salad bar as a come on. Right. And it was all the fix-ins. They would throw it in with the meal. You get unlimited shrimp. That was the big thing. And then they kind of fizzled out. No, like a salad works or a modern place. That's not the same thing, right? The salad bar was like the focal point of a restaurant for something else. Steve Weiner here with GetRubix.com. And today we're going to start taking a look at conditional access. Uh, we've touched on conditional access in the past, but uh, as I talk to more folks uh, in different organizations, it seems uh, sometimes there's a lot of confusion around the best way to go about setting basic conditional access policies and kind of building a framework from there. So uh, today we're going to go over kind of the basics of conditional access to get everyone started. And then in future episodes, we're going to keep building on top of that. I'm saying bring back the salad bar as the main attraction. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so like most things, we are going to go to the whiteboard in order to explain this correctly. So what is a conditional access policy? It's a policy that determines if an identity can access a resource, right? And that might involve many factors. All right, so the first condition we might look at is, is the user risky? Right? Is this a risky sign-in? What's the behavior pattern? Um, you know, should we be suspicious of this particular, um, you know, access request? Something else we might look at is what is the device status? What device are you coming in on? Windows, uh, Mac, is this personal device? Is it managed with Intune? Um, is it healthy? Does it have BitLocker? You know, just because maybe we've, you know, you're not a, you're not a sign at risk. It doesn't mean the device you're on doesn't pose any threat, right? Okay. What, which apps are we using on that device to access this resource? Are we coming in on a client app? So if it's email, for example, are we using the Outlook app? Is this coming in on a, a, a web browser like Edge, uh, Chrome on a mobile device, right? We need to know you know, what that is. Hey, where is the sign-in coming from? Location, right? Is this coming in from uh, perhaps our, our, you know, headquarters, our cor corporate offices? Is this coming in on a VPN connection? Is this coming in offline on a remote connection, right? Where is the request coming from? So based on these policies coming in, I can flat out choose to just block access to my resource if I don't like any one of these. So, you know, conditional access is a good way to keep, you know, potentially bad actors out. However, it's not just about blocking. It's also about granting access in a safe way. So if I do want to grant access, right, we're not just going to grant access blindly, though. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, we'll call these grant factors, and they can be any one of the following. I can require the device be marked as compliant in Intune which means it's managed in tune and it means it has, you know, the right criteria on it. I can say, depending on these circumstances, I would like an MFA prompt. So the user can use their mobile authenticator app, text message, you know, whatever it is I want. This kind of piggybacks off yesterday's video. I can require app protection policy if it's a mobile device. Say if you're on iOS or Android, right? What is the device status? Um, I need to see an app protection policy. I can also enforce approved clients. So I can say, if you are on a Windows PC that is compliant um, and you're trying to access your mail, it has to be coming from Outlook. It has to be coming from my approved client. So let's clean this up a little bit. Okay, so the user requests access to a resource. Policy evaluates things like risk, location, device platform and status, client app, and then makes a choice. Either I'm blocked access to the resource or I'm granted, but I have to adhere to grant factors, which could be, you know, whatever I determine based on these. So for example, in this case, if I'm coming in on a device that is corporate issued and uh, I'm trying to get to a resource, I can provide access by saying the device has to be compliant. So it'll check 
is the device compliant. And if that's the case, I'm granted access. If not, I am blocked, and that's the only way in. But let's say for a moment that with this particular sign-in, a user risk is detected. So yes, I'm on a compliant device, but because I've detected user risk, I'm now going to add a prompt for MFA because this policy has been flagged. So even though I'm on a corporate device, I'm giving myself that extra layer of security. So the same can go with blocking access too. Let's say I'm on a compliant device, which is fairly known to the organization. No risk has come in. I would generally grant it for being compliant, but for some reason, it's from a random location that's either not in one of my approved name uh, IPs or, or known locations or, or a VPN range. And uh, even though it's a remote device, it's coming in from maybe uh, somewhere in the world that I just wouldn't allow the device to come from. Well, if that's the case and this gets triggered, regardless of the device being compliant, we would go ahead and just block access to that right, to mitigate any security risk. And it probably makes sense at that point to get in touch with the user and, you know, find out exactly what's going on. That shows us how the conditional access flow works, but let's talk about actually putting it into practice and let's build a policy and see what happens. All right, I'm gonna go over to Intune and let's go to devices and conditional access. Now be advised the standard administ Intune administrator role will not have access to conditional access uh, access to conditional access sounds funny uh, because it's technically an intra uh, component uh, so just make sure you have the right privileges if you're not seeing it there and I have some existing policies already but we're gonna create a brand new policy so we're gonna call this um, default mobile device policy so this is going to be a sign to all users. It probably makes more sense to do a group. However, um, if you are going to do all users, you're going to want to make sure you exclude um, certain users. I'm going to exclude myself as kind of a break glass, just so I know I can get back in if I want to. Um, so yeah, either include all users and exclude certain ones or, you know, target this to groups. Now target resources. So this is what we're referring to when we talk about the resource. What are we trying to protect? So you have a few options here. If I select all cloud apps, this literally includes every single thing users would access with their credentials. Um, now, there are a lot of ramifications with this by choosing all cloud apps. This includes Intune enrollment, um, previously, you've seen I had things for uh, the Intune migration, and this would get in the way of the package user enrolling. So we want to make sure uh, we're really thinking through what makes sense. And we are going to go over best practices at some point when we start building out our framework. But for the most part, I'm actually just going to show you how this works with Office, for example. So we're going to select, oh, it's right there, Office 365. And that's going to include Exchange, Word, right, SharePoint, OneDrive, all those standard pieces. So network is the next option. And we talked about this. So what you can do is you can include any network location. You can ex you can include this policy on all trusted network locations. Same thing with excluding, right? So you can say any network location this policy applies to, or you can start excluding trusted ones. Now, in my opinion, location-based access is very much a, a perimeter type defense because in the zero trust model, we're going to assume breach everywhere. So there are some situations where this makes sense, but what we never want to do is just say, I'm going to enforce all these policies, all these conditions, except for my network, because we don't want to have that much trust in a network. Remember, assume breach. Now we get to the conditions, and this is what we were referring to user risk. Well, this comes from the Entra ID protection where you can configure the risk level. So I'm not cur currently monitoring sign-in risk, so I'm going to leave that off for now. Insider risk is also another uh, component that has more to do with Microsoft purview. We're not getting into that, so 
um, we're just going to leave that alone as well. Device platforms. Now, this is the important part. I am going to configure this platform for my mobile devices. So I'm going to choose Android and iOS, and I'm leaving it on any network or location. Now, the client apps. If I want to configure client apps, that means I'm monitoring where this is coming from. So, for example, if I wanted to only uh, protect app traffic from web browsers, right, I can easily do that here by choosing browser or I could save the mobile apps and desktop clients. In this case, um, you know, I, I really don't care about that. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that alone and not have that be a factor. Uh, so that's going to be it for that part. Um, and the rest we'll get to in the future. So grant controls. This is what we spoke about before. Do I let the device in? Do I not allow it in? And if I do let it in, what are my grant conditions? So in this case, let's think about this. This is for all users on iOS and Android uh, logging in to my Office applications. So if I enforce, let's say, MDM policy, right? So devices have to be enrolled. I will require them to be marked as compliant, meaning you can't come in on your own device, right? However, let's say I do have a use case for personally owned devices, right? Um, now I have some options here. I can say require one of the selected controls, which moves this to an or. I require the device to be marked as compliant, or I require the device to require multi-factor authentication, or I can require an approved app client, um, or require app protection policy. So for the sake of this demo, we're just going to choose the device either has to be compliant, meaning enrolled in Intune, or I need to see MFA. So we're going to turn that on. Uh, enforce policy. This is actually a good point. You can report only, which uh, really helps when you just want to test a policy. It won't affect the user, but you'll be able to see how many times it would have been triggered. And that helps you gauge impact before you roll it out. So this is essentially the policy as I've laid it out. Um, and this, this uh, document comes from a, a great community tool called Identity Power Toys. It's uh, managed and ma maintained uh, as a community project. It's not official Microsoft, but a lot of Microsoft folks work on it. And uh, it lets you sign in and it'll document your conditional access policy for you. So I went ahead and generated that so you can see basically what I'm doing here. I'm including all users, excluding myself. I am granting access if the user risk is medium or below, device platforms, Android and iOS, and to these apps are what I'm protecting, right? All my Microsoft apps. And you have to require, I require one of these. You either have to be in a compliant device or I need multi-factor uh, authentication. So let's see how this plays out. All right, so now looking at the conditional access policy in play here, I have a device that is uh, an Android device. It's not managed. And I'm gonna go ahead and open OneDrive and sign into it. So we're gonna sign in as Morty Smith at rubixdev.com should take us to our sign in screen and we're going to go and sign in so up oh, and you can see right here because uh, I'm not on a managed device I'm being prompted for MFA so let's go ahead and complete that and that should hopefully let me in and there we go now if I decide down the road that I only want to uh, make this policy work for compliant devices, I can do that as well. So I can just go to my conditional access policies, go to the default mobile device policy, and change my grant controls to get rid of multi-factor authentication and just require the device to be marked as compliant. All right, so now that I removed the MFA requirement, my only requirement is gonna be that the device is compliant. So let's open up Word and let's try to sign in. And you can see instead of MFA, I'm being prompted that my device would have to be enrolled. But now here's the thing, I'm blocking personal enrollments. It's gonna take me to the company portal application. And when I attempt to enroll my device through the company portal, and you can see I met with the device is not meet Rubik's Dev's requirements to enroll. So I'm not gonna be able to gain access to that resource then on a non-compliant device. It's a long wire I use for this thing, look at this.
So those are just the basics of conditional access. I'm sure you could tell it's a very powerful tool. Um, ultimately, I was just able on a mobile device to decide, do I want to allow personally own unmanaged access or not, right? And literally by changing the policy, I can completely prevent anyone on an unmanaged mobile device from accessing my corporate data. So there are more layers to it. There are more approaches we're gonna look at, especially when we start including desktops and more intricate authentication flows. But this is just the basics and laying it out. Um, and next time we're gonna get into taking a look at how compliance factors into the mix and going from there. So we'll be seeing you.